What's going on everybody? This is Ultima Device Vids, and today in this video we're going to be checking out 70 free iOS 13.5 tweaks. All the tweak names, sources, and video timestamps can be found in the description down below. 5Doc13 allows you to place a fifth app in your dock. Cast Switcher brings a grid style to the iPhone app switcher similar to the way it is on the iPad. Tap Tap Lock allows you to easily lock your device by either double tapping or triple tapping any empty area on your home screen just like that. If you guys jump into the settings for this tweak, you can determine whether you want to use a double tap or triple tap gesture. Manila allows you to easily launch the first four apps in a folder by invoking the quick actions menu on said folder and just releasing your finger on the app you want to launch. Normally in iOS, Apple only allows you to customize the bottom portion of your control center. They do not allow you to customize the top portion up here, so you cannot rearrange or remove these by default. Fault. However, with CC support, you're able to do that. So if you jump into settings, control center, and customize controls, as you can see, options like connectivity, media controls, etc., are now added so we can rearrange them and remove them just like any other control center module. And CC support works as a great standalone tweak. However, it's also a framework for developers to create their own control center modules. And I have a few of those running right now. Here is a power module that allows you to access options like respring, reboot, etc., right from the control center. Here's another one called CC modules that allows you to add a ton of third-party app shortcuts and utility shortcuts to the control center. And while we're in the control center, here's Cowbell. This will add the current battery percentage to the low power mode module in the control center if you have it added. Sackle will give you a preview of when your next alarm is right from the lock screen slash cover sheet area as you can see right here. And of course, inside the settings for this tweak, there's a whole host of options to configure. And I also wanted to quickly mention, if you're using Sackle on an iPhone 10 or above, and you have a passcode slash face ID enabled, you want to make sure you go into the settings for the tweak and move up the Sackle interface on the Y axis a little bit. Otherwise, the padlock icon will overlap the Sackle interface on the lock screen. Dark Keys gives you a dark keyboard everywhere in iOS, regardless of whether you're in light mode or dark mode. And if you guys jump into the settings for dark keys, you could enable or disable the tweak in here. And while we have the keyboard open, here's any key trackpad. So normally in iOS, when you want to enter trackpad mode by tapping and holding on the screen, you have to start on the space bar just like that, and then it'll enter trackpad mode. However, with any key trackpad, you're able to tap and hold on keys that aren't the space bar to enter trackpad mode, as you can see right there. Clear Dock 12 makes the home screen dock completely transparent, as you can see. Cylinder allows you to add animations to when you swipe between home screen pages and folder pages, as you can see right here. If you jump into the settings for this tweak, there's a whole host of different modes that you can access. You could also combine the modes if you want to. Of course, to enable a mode, you just tap on it. And of course, if you want to combine effects, as you can see, you can absolutely do that. And of course, you could just tap on options to disable them as well. And without a doubt, one of the most well-known modes is curl and roll away, which is this one right here. Color Me Notifs will change the color of your notifications to the color of the application that the notification came from. As you can see, it also provides a similar effect to your now playing interface using the colors from your current album artwork and using that to theme the now playing view. As you can see here, it will also take effect for the widgets, again, changing the color of the widgets to the color of the app that the widget is associated with. And I also wanted to quickly show you that this tweak looks quite good in dark mode, as you can see here, for both the notifications, the now playing view, and the widgets. And of course, if you guys jump into the settings for this tweak, there are some options to configure. Cask 2 allows you to add nice animations when you're scrolling through table views in iOS. In the settings for the tweak, you can choose between a few different animations in addition to some other settings. Dock Spring allows you to easily respring your device just by sliding up on the dock like that. Delete Cut allows you to easily delete whole words at a time. You could tap and hold on the shift button, and then the delete key will turn red. And in this state, when you tap on the delete button, as you can see, it will delete whole words at a time. And of course, if you jump into the settings for Delete Cut, there are some options to configure. Stick Around allows you to pin any option from the main list view in the Settings app to the top of the Settings app for easy access. Just swipe to the left on any option and then select Pin, and then Set Option will be available at the top of the Settings app for easy access, as you can see right there. If you want to unpin something, just swipe to the left again and select Unpin. Fluid Tabs allows you to switch between the tabs and applications easily just by swiping on the screen, as you can see right here. If you guys jump into the settings for this tweak, you can enable or disable the tweak and determine if you want animations when switching between tabs with the tweak. And you may have already noticed this earlier, but here's longer call button. It'll just make your call button a longer pill shape rather than the smaller circular shape that it normally is. Globe alarm settings allows you to execute a few different commands on all of the alarms inside your clock app. So if you go into the alarm section of the clock app, select edit, and then select set all. As you can see, we have a few different options that we could apply to all of the alarms. So for instance, I'm just going to go ahead and toggle off all of my alarms. As you can see right there, all the alarms are off just like that. 
And if you guys head over to the settings for this tweak, you can determine which options you want to show. Normally in iOS, when you tap and hold on the globe icon on the keyboard, you have the option to go to the keyboard settings and you also have some one-handed options down here. However, with hide KB settings, as you can see here with the device on the right, it will hide the option to go to the keyboard settings and it will hide the one-handed options. You can still access the one-handed options inside the settings app. This tweak just hides it from this little menu. And if you guys jump into the settings for hide KB settings, you can determine which of those two things you want to hide. Menu support makes the text selection menu in iOS icon based. As you can see right here, normally it'll actually say, you know, select all, cut, copy, etc. But it just has these nice icons going for a very subtle and clean look. Oh My Flash allows you to set your flashlight to automatically turn off after a specified amount of time that you determine inside the settings for the tweak. So as you can see, I have it set for one minute. So whenever I turn my flashlight on, after one minute, it's automatically going to turn itself off to prevent your iPhone's battery from draining if you forget to turn your flashlight off. So of course, I sped this up for the sake of time, but as you can see, it does indeed turn itself off after my specified amount of time. Quit All allows you to easily close all the applications in your app switcher just with a single tap of a button as you can see right there. And of course if you jump over to the settings for this tweak, there's a few different options to configure. Safari features allows you to add some new features to Safari. As you can see right here, I have the tab view active in portrait mode on the iPhone which is normally not able to be accessed. You can also see my bookmark bar is able to be accessed at all times. I also have this new grid view for the tabs as you can see. And if you guys jump over to the settings for this tweak you can determine which of these options you want to apply. You could also enable or disable the tweak. AV lock allows you to easily enable and disable portrait orientation lock right from the stock video player in iOS. So the most common use case that I could think of for this is if you have your device in portrait lock and then you go to rotate your device into a landscape to watch a video, this allows you to easily disable portrait lock, watch the video, and then when you're done you can easily re-enable portrait lock without ever having to go into the control center. Blank pass makes the passcode buttons on the lock screen completely blank as you can see right here, going for a cleaner look. Tempest Romanum allows you to make your time Roman numerals as you can see right here. So it works in the status bar. You could also enable it for the cover sheet slash lock screen area as well. And of course, if you jump into the settings for this tweak, there are some options to configure. DND My Recording will automatically enable Do Not Disturb as soon as you initiate a screen recording on your device. As you can see right there, as soon as my screen is being recorded, Do Not Disturb is automatically enabled. And of course, this is great because it won't interrupt your screen recording with incoming notifications. And as soon as you stop screen recording, as you can see there, Do Not Disturb is automatically disabled. And in order to make this tweak work, you want to make sure you go into your Do Not Disturb settings and make sure under silence it's set to always because of course when you're screen recording your device, your screen is obviously awake. So of course if it's while the iPhone is locked only, it's not going to do you any good. So make sure it's set to always. Normally in iOS, when you swipe to the left on a notification or a group of notifications, you'll have an option to manage the settings for that notification. However, with don't manage my notifications, as you can see, that option is completely removed. No functionality is lost, though. You can still access all those options inside the notification settings. Normally in iOS, if you want to edit an alarm, you have to select the edit button and then tap on the alarm. However, with easy edit alarms, you're able to edit alarms just by tapping on the alarms without ever having to select edit. Drag Spring allows you to easily respring your device just by pulling to refresh inside the settings app like so. Easy Swipe allows you to access your cover sheet slash lock screen area and your control center through easy gestures on the home screen. So by default, the way this tweak is set up is if you swipe down on the left side of your home screen, it'll take you to your cover sheet slash lock screen area. If you swipe down on the right side, it'll take you to the control center. And if you swipe down in the middle, it'll just take you to your spotlight search like it normally is. If you jump over to the settings for this tweak, you can map out which function will apply for swiping down on the left, middle, and right side of the home screen. Transparent Notif will make your notifications transparent. As you can see right here, there's also options that allow you to remove the app name that the notification came from and the timestamp. And if you guys jump into the settings for this tweak, there's some options to configure. And Clear Widgets provides a very similar effect to the widgets in iOS. As you can see right here, they're completely transparent. And of course, if you guys jump into the settings for this tweak, there's also a few different options to configure. Normally in iOS, when you swipe from left to right on a notification, the app that the notification came from will be opened up. However, with slide to show notification, it's just going to expand the notification rather than open up the full app. So as you can see right there, that was for messages and here's a different application. This is tips in this case. You can see it's just going to expand the notification rather than opening up the full app. Home bar sizer allows you to change the width and height of the home bar on the iPhone 10 and above. As you can see, mine is longer in width and taller in height. And of course, if you guys jump over to the settings for this tweak, you can determine both the width and the height and of course, enable and disable the tweak. Icon vibe gives you taptic feedback when you launch applications. 
And if you hop over to the settings for Icon Vibe, you could toggle between soft and strong taptic feedback, or you could just turn the tweak off. Normally in iOS, when you swipe over to the widgets page from the lock screen slash cover sheet area, the time will stay at the top, as you can see here on the device on the left. However, with I know the time over here on the right, you can see it removes the time from the widgets page. Normally in iOS, when your device is locked and you receive a phone call, you'll get the slide to answer interface. You will not get the two buttons that say accept and decline. However, with let me decline, you'll get that same interface that's normally available when your device is unlocked on your lock screen. So you can more easily decline a call just by selecting the button rather than having to press the power button twice. And next up, we have clear call. And you guys may have noticed this just a moment ago. This makes the call background when you're both making phone calls and receiving phone calls completely transparent rather than blurred, which is the way it normally Normally is. Normally in iOS, when you're in low power mode, your auto lock time is automatically set to 30 seconds, and you're unable to change that when in low power mode. However, with LPM auto lock time, you're able to do that. You're able to change it to one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, or never, just like you're normally able to do when not in low power mode. No 3D lines removes the separators between the options in quick action menus on the home screen. Hide NC text removes the text that normally says notification center above groups of notifications or a notification in the cover sheet slash lock screen area. Normally in iOS, the title of applications in notifications is all uppercase, but as you can see with lower the notifs, it makes the titles all lowercase. Low power DND will automatically enable low power mode as soon as you enable do not disturb mode on your device. And of course, as soon as you disable do not disturb mode, low power mode will also be disabled. And speaking of do not disturb, no D&D banner will remove the banner that's normally placed on your lock screen slash cover sheet area telling you that you're in do not disturb when you're in do not disturb, just going for a cleaner look. Noir allows you to easily enable and disable dark mode by pulling to refresh inside the settings app, just like that. Normally in iOS, when you have nothing in your cover sheet slash lock screen area, it'll say no older notifications, but with no older notifications text, that text is removed. Pill volume makes your volume and brightness sliders in the control center have this new pill design. As you can see, it applies in both the expanded view and the shrunken view, just like that. Normally in iOS, when you toggle off Bluetooth or Wi-Fi directly from the control center, it won't actually turn them fully off. It'll just temporarily disable them. However, with real CC, it actually fully disables them. Rofi allows you to launch and switch to your favorite applications through a menu that can be pulled out from the side of your device. So you could set your favorite applications to show up here and access them at any time. You could rearrange the position of this little slider and move it between the left and right side of your device just like this. And of course, if you guys jump over to the settings for this tweak, you can determine which applications you want to show up here as well as the apps per page. And of course, there's also some other options to configure as well. And if you surpass the amount of applications per page with how many apps you add, you could just swipe down to access all your apps. Send delay gives you a short grace period after you press send in the messages app to cancel the message from being sent. So if you notice a typo last minute, or maybe you notice you're texting the wrong person last minute, this gives you a second to easily cancel the message before it's sent. And of course, if you wait, it'll just send as normal. And if you jump into the settings for the tweak, you can determine how long the delay is. SITUM allows you to easily perform a search on a term or word. Just highlight the term or word and then find the magnifying glass and select it. Then as you can see, it'll perform a search in a mini little browser of the term that you selected. And of course, you could dismiss this by pressing the X or you could select the little compass icon in the upper right hand corner to be redirected to a full browser of said search. And of course, if you guys head over to the settings for this tweak, there's some options to configure. Size Finder allows you to easily determine how much storage applications are taking up just by putting your device into wiggle mode. So once your device is in wiggle mode, you'll see there, normally where the X's appear on top of applications, you'll see the amount of storage that applications are taking up. So you can see YouTube 181 megabytes, Spotify 99 megabytes, etc. However, no functionality is lost. You can still tap on the amount of storage to have the ability to delete the application if you want to. Normally in iOS, when you're scrolling through conversations in the Messages app, you'll see a blurred version of the bubbles in the navigation bar as you're scrolling. However, with Solid Messages Banner, that blur effect is completely removed. Normally in iOS, when you tap on a result in Spotlight Search, and then you come back to Spotlight Search, the text will still remain that you were just typing. However, with Spot Clear on Close, it will automatically clear Spotlight Search as soon as you actually tap on a result, as you can see right here. 
Normally in iOS, when using reachability mode, after you tap on an option, reachability will automatically dismiss itself. But as you can see here with stay down, I'm tapping on options and reachability is staying in place. The same thing goes for tapping in the empty space at the top. Normally that dismisses it, but it doesn't in this case. You actually have to slide up on the arrow at the top or wait for reachability to time out. Volume percent will add a percentage to the volume HUD in iOS 13. As you can see, it works in the shrunken view and in the expanded view like so. Weather ground allows you to use live weather effects as your wallpaper. So as you can see here, I have this nice effect going in the background. And if I open up the weather app, you'll notice that that's the same condition that's going on right now. So with this tweak, you can literally just wake up your device and look at the wallpaper and know what the weather is. And if you guys jump into the settings for this tweak, there's a whole host of options to configure. However, one thing I want to point out is the use weather effects only. So with this enabled, what it's going to do is it's actually going to just overlay the weather conditions on top of your wallpaper rather than taking over your whole wallpaper. So as you can see here with use weather effects only, it's definitely more subtle. Vinyl transforms the media player on the lock screen slash cover sheet area to a much more simple, compact look. And if you guys jump into the settings for this tweak, you can configure it to your liking. Rounded Modules provides this rounded effect to the modules in the control center. Hide Labels 13 will hide all the icon labels on your home screen. Next up we have 2Dock iOS 13. Now if you guys are using an iPhone 8 or below, you're going to want to install 2Dock iOS 13. And if you're using an iPhone 10 or above, you're going to want to install 2Dock X iOS 13. This tweak allows you to have two rows in your dock, and it also allows you to have five icons on each row. Normally in iOS, if you have multiple different keyboards programmed on your device and you tap on the globe icon, it'll just cycle you through all the keyboards that you have added. So as you can see here, I have English, Emoji, French, and Spanish. However, with keyboard Accio, as you can see here, when I tap on the globe icon, it's only going to switch me between my first two keyboards. I can still access the other ones just by, you know, selecting them through the menu. However, again, whenever I single tap on the globe icon, it's just going to switch me between the first two. So if you have a lot of keyboards programmed on your device, but primarily for the most part, you use the first two, this tweak could definitely be handy. Accent allows you to change the color of your UI accent in iOS. So things like toggle switches and the back buttons, sliders, etc. As you can see, I have mine changed to red. And of course, to set this up, you want to jump into the settings for accent and then choose your color in here. You could also disable this tweak in certain applications if you want to as well. Spot on will replace the standard app badges on your home screen with minimalist dots, as you can see right here. And if you guys hop over to the settings for this tweak, there's a whole host of options to configure. Spot CC allows you to get to the control center just by sliding down anywhere on the home screen. So if you don't like the normal spotlight gesture, this is an easy way to get to the control center using that gesture. Icon renamer allows you to rename any icon on your home screen. Just put your device into wiggle mode and then tap on the icon you want to rename. And you could put in anything you want and then select apply. And as you can see, the change did take an effect. All right, everybody, that wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.